Did you know that after Daniel received a vision concerning the final days of this world, he was so astonished that he even got sick? He simply could not understand the vision. Actually, no one did. Daniel saw the development of the great controversy, everything the people of God would have to go through. And instead of revealing the explanation for everything, the Lord only asked him to seal up the vision because it referred to the future, to the time of the end. Centuries later, John the disciple also had a vision, but this time an angel who was holding a little book commanded him to figuratively eat it. The little book was sweet as honey in the mouth, but bitter in the stomach. The vision was predicting what would happen in 1844, as the Millerite movement found excitement in partially understanding the prophecy given to Daniel, followed by the great disappointment of not seeing Christ coming back in the clouds. Today, we understand that this was only the beginning of the Adventist movement, and that 1844 was part of God's broad plan for humanity. In fact, we're all living in the time of the end, right now. But most people around the globe have no idea about this. That is why we need to reach all nations, bringing the good news to every single person living on the surface of the earth. As you return your tithe and give your promise, think about how your faithfulness can be a blessing to those who haven't heard a word about the gospel. Pray to Jesus so you become useful in his kingdom, even before the world witnesses him coming back in the clouds. May we put our desires last and God first. Is there a heart or bound by sorrow? Is there a life weighed down by care? Come to the cross, each burden bearing, all your anxiety leave it there. All your anxiety, all your cares, bring to the mercy seat, leave it. Yeah.
Greetings to you with the powerful and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is soon to come. I'm greeting you. Amen. Before I start my sermon, I would love to just congratulate all of the saints for still holding on tightly in this journey. It's not an easy road, can it? It's a liar tata. Mainly this year, 2021. As we see, we are bearing family members in a large scale. Uh, some, as I've heard, have lost three family members within a period of a week. Kaniti, it's difficult. We have lost our elder. So as we see, things are becoming more tougher and difficult. But hold on, cheer on. Soon and very soon, our King, our Savior, our Jesus Christ, whom we are, we are long waiting for, will soon appear. Who have lost their loved ones? All the time. And he seated on his throne. He's still good. He will always be good till he comes again. I have titled my sermonet of this Sabbath Vespers. If you let the devil use you. If you let the devil use you. I'll be focusing on a common and well-known text. Genesis 3 verse 1. And it reads thus. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Let me reread it again. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Let us pray. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. The, the NIV text says, Now the serpent was more crafty or more subtle than any other animals. The Lord had made. Kasitwana in my language, it will say, "No haya bo elebo fere fere." Oh, Jesus, the Paul of Lord said, "Choi kete mo dimo akatwa di derile." But my first responsibility is to disabuse to disabuse you of the fact that the snake didn't lose. Only its wings. Akit kaukwalana. And remembering that I've said, my title is if you let the devil use you. Now, Ellen White, in the book of story of redemption, page thirty-two, reads thus: The serpent was a beautiful creature with wings. And while flying through the air, his appearance was bright, resembling burnished gold. He did not go up on the ground, but went from place to place through air. So the interesting part is, and it ate fruit like a man. Do you see this beautiful creature? Can you relate to this beautiful creature? It was a magnificent creature the Lord had made. 
it was a creature and where it was the second after man. I don't know if we can relate. Basically, man was the cream of creation. Humankind, me and you. So the snake was a creature after mankind. The Bible says it was more subtle, more crafty, the most beautiful creature of them all. So the problem is <laughs> this beautiful creature allowed the arch enemy to use it. That's where the problem is with this beautiful creature God had made. The problem is you and I allows the devil to use us. So be careful because the devil will use you. So I will love us to give the devil a credit because he doesn't use dummies. He chose the more subtle creature, the more crafty, the, more, the, the most beautiful of them all. So Kanete, Satan Hatsamiki, he doesn't play. He will use you as beautiful as you are if you let him. Amen. So, Satan used the devil, he tempted Eve and Adam. God asked Adam, what have you done? Adam said, is the wife you have given me. Okay, Eve, what happened? What have you done? Is the serpent. So God cursed them all. He started with Adam, as we know. The ground will be cursed. You will eat by the sweat. And you will eat bread for the rest of your life. That's Adam. If you will beg children by difficulties in pain. And you will always submit by this husband of yours. Even if he mistreats you, you will still go after him for the rest of your days. But you, snake, but you, serpent, after all that I have done, after all that I have put in you, as Ellen White says, it was resembling Benish gold. It was flying through. After all these things, it chewed, it ate fruit like a man. After all these things, You have done this to me. You have allowed the devil to use you after all these things. Oh, children of the Most High. Those are the words which we don't want to hear from Christ our Savior. After all he has done for you. After all he has done for me. And I let the devil use me. And you let the devil use you. After all he has done for you. And God said, Serpent, you will crawl on your belly. I suggest to you that it was the beginning of the whole lot of the curse. So, <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. This creature used to fly. So God said, you will crawl on your be belly. Imply, give me back my wings. Give me back my wings. You don't need them anymore because you let the devil use, use you. Give me back what belongs to me as God. Give me back my wings. As if that's not enough. When you study animals which fly, you will realize that they need air. They need big lungs to keep them offload when they fly from place to, 
to place at those high speeds. So God was saying, Snake, give me back my lance. You don't need to fly anymore. Give me back my lance. So scientists or whoever people who are dealing with animals, when they look at these big snakes, they say in some cases they have only one lung. I'm talking about a serpent which used to fly. So God said, give me back what belongs to me, my lungs. <laughs> so, it's the second part. So, when I continue, when you fly, hear me out, saints of the Musa, when you fly, at some point, you need to land. So it suggests that a serpent used to have landing gas. Bring it closer, a serpent used to have legs to land. So when God said, you will crawl on your belly, it was inclusive. Give me back the legs you used to have. You don't need to fly. You don't need lungs anymore to keep you afloat. You don't need legs for landing because you will be on your belly. Give me back my lungs because you let the devil use you. So when scientists study these big snakes, they find that there is remnants or leftovers at the back of their tails, which suggests that long ago before sin, they used to have legs. So God said in his case, give me back my legs. Because you don't need to fly anymore. As if it's not enough. When a creature flies, it needs clear eyesight to see when it travels with its high speed. So it suggests that a snake used to have good eyesight to see where it's going while traveling through air. Oh, saints of the Musta, if you let the devil use you. So God said, you don't need good eyesight anymore because you won't fly from place to place. You will be crawling on your bed. So God took back his eyesight. So when snakes are studied, they realize that it can see long distances. Let me bring it close. It can see long distances, but it can see what's in front of it. So that's a snake. It, it did let the devil use it. God took back his eyesight. So as if that's not enough. The Bible says it was the most intelligent animal on earth. When currently scientists try to measure its IQ. And how it is done is that they place a frog inside of whatever the container that is in it and try to see if it can eat it. But normally they get a flat line. So basically the case was inclusive. If you let the devil use you, give me back my intelligence. As if that's not enough. Me and you know, at the Garden of Eden, the snake spoke to Eve. The snake listened to Eve. So it suggests that it had a voice box. Which means it could speak. And currently we know that when the snake opens it, its mouth, there's no sound coming there's no words which are coming out of its mouth. So it doesn't, it's, it doesn't no longer speak. So when God said, <laughs> you are cursed, on your belly you will go. It was inclusive. Give me back my voice box. You no longer speak, you sneak. As if it's not enough. It used to have ears. Because you can't have a conversation without hearing. Oh, children of the Most High, I wish you could hear where I'm going with this. Currently, 
when you look at the snake or when the scientist explains the snake, they will say, yes, they still have ears, but they are buried under their thick scales. They can't hear what's going on. So God said in his case, give me back my ears. Why? Because you let the devil use you. So, as I'm about to conclude, don't let the devil use you. Because when you let the devil use you, you can't fly anymore. You can't fly anymore. When you let the devil use you, your mind won't be what it used to be. You can't take, when you let the devil use you, you can't take the truth. You can't have teeth to masticate and digest those truths. Oh, when you let the devil use you, you won't have that voice. To communicate God's truth. As if it's not enough. When you let the devil use you. You will only see things which are far off your eyesight. But you can't even understand the Bible which is in front of you. Because you let the devil use you. When you let the devil use you. You can't hear. And walk in righteousness. Because your ears will be buried under your thick skin. Because you let the devil use you. Oh, children of the Most High, if you let the devil use you, you won't have legs to walk in the, in, in the path of righteousness. Oh, if you let the devil use you, you'll be just like a snake. The only resemble you will resemble is the devil himself because you let him use you so be careful to let the devil use you because if you let the devil use you God will take back what belongs to him when I close as we are in a stewardship month, let us not let the devil use us. Amid our properties, amid our beauty, amid whatever the talents, whatever the blessings God has bestowed upon us, let us be careful to let the devil use you. Come <laughs> And we must be careful to let the devil use us. Because the snake used to be a cream tool of creation. It used to be uh, uh, the most beautiful creature the Lord has, had, had made. We are beautiful because we are, we, we are made by God. But if we let the devil use us, our values as human beings, all the riches which God has bestowed upon us, all the knowledge, whatever gifts, each and everything God has laid upon us, He will take it back. And the only thing you will resemble is the devil himself. Oh, it cannot be hell. These are the last days. Let us be careful to be used by the devil. I want to say, let us hold tight in this faith. Soon and very soon, our God. Our Savior, our Jesus Christ, will soon appear. Let us have a blessed Sabbath evening. Amen. Let us pray. Morena, the devil to use us. So, Morena, we have heard that when the devil uses us, we will be naked. As your children, get in a cab of hello. He too said, Gane, the cocomele, the scabera drum to mellow. Get up like so flat, the talking in the Rajas of Amen. Amen.